Hi, my name is Nikolai Salcedo and welcome to Home and Garden Caribbean. Today, we're here with Anthony Scully. Anthony is a top-notch photographer as well as a foodie and today he will be making corn pie, one of his signature dishes. Yeah, so Anthony, hi. And hi. Can you tell us what we have on the table here? I see like seasoning, pimentos, that's my favorite. Well, yeah, this is, yeah. Uh, these are the ingredients for my, for my version of corn pie. It's something I grew up eating, um, different friend family's places. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the family would go out for you know, dinners over Christmas, all years. Um, we would have corn pie, it's something I loved. Um, just when I, later, years later, I just um, decided I wanted to make it. I didn't ask anybody for any uh, recipe, I just figured out on my own. This is how it used to taste, and this is how I wanted to taste. Oh, you're a real um, chef, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we've got some cheese, yeah. we've got some carrots, we've got some onions, we've got some pimentos, um, we've got some celery, fresh celery and saive. Mm. Uh, we've got cream style corn, we've got some whole corn, uh, some salt for flavor, some black pepper, uh, some evaporated milk. We've got some dried parsley because parsley is out of season. Right. Uh, we usually, I usually like to use a fresh parsley, but um, the dried one will, will suffice this time. And some Italian seasoning, mm. uh, just for some, some extra flavor. Okay. And yeah, this leaves. Prep the ingredients, bring them all together, and then get them in the oven and the magic starts. Well, I know that corn pie is like, it's a Caribbean staple, yeah? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you all make corn pie at home or if you even like corn pie. I love it. That goes without saying. But anyway, so Anthony, let's begin the, the operation. Walk us through this whole thing. Right, well, um, so we've got the cheese. We're going to start grating the cheese. All right. All right for a typical uh, four to six persons uh, serving, I would usually use a pound and a half of, of local, of our, uh, local, local New Zealand cheddar cheese. Right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you grate this up as well, pretty much as if you're making a macaroni pie. Yeah. All right, so we're, um, so we're through with the cheese. Uh, we now move on to the carrots. We're going to grate some carrots. Okay. Uh, we usually use two, two medium to large carrots, uh, again for the uh, four to six person serving. Mm. So this is a really, really colorful meal. It's colorful yeah. and it's uh, flavorful. Nice. Um, so you get a little bit of the sweetness from the, from the carrots. Yeah, and it's also very nutritious, I mean, with all of those seasonings and yeah. Yeah, know, the is. carrots and the corn. Yeah. Next up is the pimentos. Uh, I usually cut them quite small, just slice them, slice them small so they, um, nice. they cook quickly. So it's only two, two pimentos that you put in? No. No? <laughs> no, I use, I use six to eight pimentos. Really? Yeah, yeah, because I want, I want a lot of flavor. Lovely. And then um, and we've got the onion. Uh, again, we're going to cut it uh, quite, quite fine, because mm. uh, you don't want to, you want some texture. The, some of these the vegetables provide texture as well, as well as flavor. Right. And, um, but the, you don't want, don't want it to be overpowering. Exactly, right. So you're cutting the onion fine? Yes, cut it up into okay. small pieces. So it gives it a little bit of texture, but um, right. and a, a lot of flavor. Right. So you're using fresh celery here. You know, Scully, I would actually say that that's the much better way to go. I mean, when you're using like fresh produce, all the flavor, everything is just really rich. Yeah, yeah? it's true, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, if you're gonna go and buy it like already, what do you call that, preserved, you know, then, or you can get the dried celery, but it's not, it's yeah, not but the same. Yeah, but then it's just not the same, you know? So, I mean, like for me, I know I support like a lot of local farmers and that kind of thing, you know, because even having a home garden at home, you know, something that you could walk out your back door and like for me, I highly love shadow bending. Love it, oh, love yeah, it, love yeah. it, love it. And I have like loads of it growing in my backyard. I just, every time I wake up in the morning to make eggs, if I have to cook, whatever have you, walk outside, pick a few leaves, come back inside, chop that up. It's perfect. Everything, the aroma, everything about it is just so rich. And you can check out our website, hdcaribbean.com, to be able to get tips on actually building your own home garden. Yeah. So this is so what next up, we've got the saive. Saive. Uh, fresh saive. Yeah, so sometimes when you're cutting up the saive, you can actually cut the a little bit higher above the bulb and, and put it in some, some water. It'll start shooting roots, and you mm. can then plant that and grow your own saive in your own kitchen garden. I have... Um, okay. I have a small amount of side growing in my kitchen garden for those those days when I don't have chance to run out to the market and I could just right, post just another garden. Pick it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone was telling me that um the flavor of side actually lies in the bulb and not in so much in the leaves. I mean the leaves has flavor of course. But yeah the majority yeah. majority I, of it lies I, in yeah, the bulb. The majority of the flavor is in the bulb. Something useful to know. It's true. Yeah. Next up we have some garlic. Oh. I love garlic. I love garlic too. I use quite a lot of it. 
again, um, I don't want somebody eating corn pie to come across a big chunk of garlic in the food. I probably wouldn't mind, but um, a lot of people wouldn't like it. So I use a garlic crusher. Okay. And uh, crush the garlic. Right. Um, I would tend to use a whole garlic yeah. for a dish like this. Um, I mean, garlic is a wonder. It's like a wondrous thing. Right? I mean, it's very, very healthy. Very, very good for you. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's great for you. And um, some people don't like the, the, the too much of the flavor. Yeah. Um, or they don't like too much of the smell. So this, uh, as much as the, the as much of the recipe is on the website hgcaribbean.com, um, you can you can adjust the quantity of garlic to suit your your needs. Your personal preference. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, this looks like. I'm getting hungry already just watching this. And you should smell this right now. It's like, it's just like really, really good. Yeah, yeah it's something I always enjoy preparing. Yeah. Right, so you reach the stove, ready to, <laughs> yeah. ready to start putting this thing properly together now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate, just going to put uh, a portion of the cheese aside mm -hmm. for the top of the pie. Uh, probably a quarter of what you've, of what you've grated. Okay. I'm uh, just going to put that aside so that we don't get carried away and mix it in and then have to put extra cheese. That's not always a bad thing, but... Right. Uh, we're going to turn ahead. Right, so what we're going to... We've got a pot here on the stove. Mm -hmm. We are going to put the stove on low. Oh, just below medium. Okay. Uh, we're going to add a two, about two tablespoons of olive oil. Get that a little warm, and then we're going to start adding our fresh vegetables the, the onion, the garlic, the pimentos, uh, the celery. celery yeah. And we'll let them saute a little bit. Alright, so we'll saute those, uh, get some of those flavors to start to mix and melt, right. and then we'll start adding just add the rest of the vegetables the carrots, um, the, the fresh corn, the cream style corn, and we add the cheese. Right. We mix everything together. Um, just we don't want to get too hot, we're just going to get warm. So it's just it gets the cheese to start melting. Milk goes in at that point. Uh, too. Then we yeah, then we start we put a small amount of milk in. Okay. And then we start we add some of the corn flour. And then we just start mixing it just to get it to the right consistency. Right. The consistency I've realized that works well is um, just when it when it starts mixing it, it just starts to pull into a, almost like a dough. Okay. It pulls away from the edges of the pot. Okay. And the pot spoon will just stand and just just start to fall over. Right. When when it's at that consistency. So it's, um, sometimes it varies a little bit depending on the brands of cream style corn and so on. So that's why my, my measurements are for the for the corn corn flour and so on in the, in the recipe are right. It's pretty much a guessing, yeah. Because yeah. Um, sometimes it's a bit it's a bit drier, sometimes it's a bit wetter. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's either a little bit more corn flour, a little bit more milk, milk. and that just right. gives you that balance to give you the right consistency. Okay. Man, that smells really really excellent. Yeah, this is this is one of my favorite parts of the whole process yeah. because it, you get that. Aroma of all the yeah. all the ingredients just sorting together. Um, you guys should smell this kitchen right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we just added the black pepper. Uh, now we're gonna add some salt. Mm -hmm. um, I usually how much put, salt do you use? Uh, I usually put about two te two teaspoons of salt. Two teaspoons. Okay. Um, and then just tweak it uh, to you know to soup afterwards right. at the very end. Sure. Get a taste of what it's like before it gets in the oven. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. <laughs> that is really good. Nice, nice. Very flavorful. Oh, lovely. Great, great, great. Mm. So then what we're gonna, I'm gonna get it into a, a baking dish. Um, because this is essentially formed into a dough, mm -hmm. it's pretty easy to move, it's just a bit heavy. Right. And how long does it have to cook for? Um, 45 minutes at 375 is usually sufficient. I usually do it uncovered so that it, it cooks, it browns one time, mm -hmm. faster from oven to mouth. Usually most people are agreeable. Right. Right, and now we, this extra cheese that we put on the side, sprinkle that over the top quite liberally. So this is gonna give us our nice cheesy crust. So we're, we're here. Uh, right now the corn pie is in the oven, so it's really smelling, coming along nice. It is, it yeah. is. Uh, so it's something I would usually do around, do it throughout the year, but especially for Christmas Day. Yeah. Um, usually incorporate it in with a couple of other things, probably some 
uh, some some baked potatoes, mm. uh, some steamed vegetables. But you want, I, I usually like this to be the well, aside from the turkey, this to be the signature, be, right? This yeah, is the future dish, yeah, yeah, because yeah, nice, nice, it's uh, nice. listen, I, I love it, and people seem to like it quite a lot too. Yeah. So, Anthony, Christmas Day, there's no way that I'm gonna get up and do all of that cooking, right? Because you know, you're gonna be running around busy with family and runs yeah. and whatnot, yeah. so. Can I prepare it from the night before? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. It preheats really well. Uh, yeah, you can you can do it prepare it the day before, put it in the oven in the evening at night, let it cool off, put it in the fridge. Uh, either uh, stick it back in the oven the next morning, just the next day for lunch. Yeah, just to bring it back it to it. And yeah. It's excellent. It's an excellent piece of part of a meal that you can reheat. Nice. And it works really well. Nice. Yeah. So why don't you try this delicious recipe on your Christmas day? You can make it part of your celebration. And you can get the recipe on our website. Again, that's hgcaribbean.com